up, everybody? Greg Chapman, the Gentleman Girl of Small Business Podcast. And today I'm joined by Randall Angstrom, owner and operator of Randall Sandals in Pacific Beach. Randall, can you please tell the people a little bit more about you? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for having me. Pleasure I've been very excited about coming on this. Um, so, ready to get this started. Um, Randall Sandals, yes, I'm Randall of Randall Sandals. And uh, we started this concept 10 years ago. Uh, just uh, kind of a ball gaming with a couple friends, just kind of just you know, shooting ideas around, spitballing, mm -hmm. seeing, you know, hey, is this a good business idea? Is this a good business idea? Just like that very entrepreneurial type of network and mindset. And uh, just hit Randall Sandals. Nice. All right. That's cool. So you guys have been, you've been doing Randall Sandals for a lot longer because we just heard about you, like really, because I've heard the name before, but you just recently opened up your storefront in Pacific Beach, correct? Yeah, uh, we opened up four years ago. Okay. Uh, we started on Turquoise Street for three years, and then we just made the move down to Garnett. Okay. Uh, this past year. Which I'm sure has garnered you a lot more attention and walk-in business. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Garnett is the heart of PB, so there's a little more hustle and bustle down there. And uh, yeah, it's a, it was a great transition. Well, one door closes, uh, another opens. So Absolutely. it was a, just a great opportunity to get down on Garnett, get that foot traffic that uh, is a little bit more year-round. Um, and it, uh, things have been great. We just won uh, Best Small Business of the Year. I was going to say, I saw you won an award recently, so that's really awesome. That's not something that's easy to come by. No, yeah, that was a very unexpected. It has to be a nomination from the community. Uh, it was for District 2, so that includes uh, Pacific Beach, Ocean Beach, Bay Park, Bay Ho, Point Loma, Claremont, like a lot of uh, a lot more areas than just Pacific Beach. So it was um, really surprising and an amazing uh, thing to happen. And it's like it, it's cool because like a lot of people don't see like all the hard work you're putting into mm -hmm. like in the after hours and like the daily like grind that yeah. entrepreneurs and networkers do. And so it's just. Like, I definitely got very emotional, like, when uh, I got to go up in there and get that award. It was just like, whoa, all this hard work, people actually do, like, appreciate it. And so it was just, like, this, like, cool, um, just emotional ride. And uh, this this past week has been really cool. We've been doing um, a lot of good for the community, and it's being recognized. So it's it's been cool. That is awesome. So... Tell me a little bit more about uh, how Randall Sandals operates. Like, what what made it so that you won the best business? Because, um, I mean, obviously, you're a sandals company. Yeah. But what else are you doing so, that's making you – because I can, I can name ten places right. like Garnett that I can buy For sure. sandals at. But what's I making agree. you the best business? Yeah, so what's uh, pretty cool about um, – as I was saying ten years ago, I was just going to carry, like, every sandal known to man. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, like as I'm saving to start the business, you know, it's a ten, you know, at least ten years for me when you're starting, kind of from scratch. Yeah. So it takes a while to save up. It takes a while. It's a grind. So I mean, and um, so as I'm learning though about the world and getting educated on the retail market, on the textile market, I'm finding out like it's a huge polluter. It's the second largest polluter behind the oil industries and plastic industries. The textile industry? Textile, retail, fast wow. fashion. Yes, huge polluter. And so I'm like, dang, I don't want to add to the problem that I'm trying to fix. How can I maybe utilize my business platform as a way to fix like these problems going on in the world and as well as keep like a fun business for the community? So as I learned that, I'm like, all right, well, let's narrow it down. Not just every sandal known to man. Let's focus on sandals that are local, eco-friendly, charitable. So let's focus on those types of you know, products and businesses that have those positive statements of how they're made or how they give back. So as I'm doing that, I narrow it down and there's a handful of sandal companies that are like that. Most of them aren't. So I'm like, well, I can't just have like five brands of sandals so I'm like, what else can I do? 
our beach products. I'm at the beach. I love the beach. I love the beach lifestyle. Like, this is why I moved here. This is why I live here. I bike everywhere. Mm -hmm. I go to the boardwalk. I go around the bay. I go for runs. Like, Pacific Beach is what I'm trying to, like, coin it this. So maybe we can start here. Uh, Pacific Beach is San Diego's playground. It really is. You can is. do everything you want here. We have the largest man-made structure in the United States is the uh, Mission Bay Beach Park. It's so much coastline. There's You can jog, skate, bike, run, kite sail, surf. You, you name it, you can do it. Jet ski, you know, boat, like sail. Like There's so many amazing right. like things we can do uh let alone like surfing right off the ocean you know that's mother nature's biggest playground <laughs> yeah right there so we really just like and our amazing parks we just have like so much right here right in our backyard and so that's i'm like let's focus on the beach products then so then it's like finding uh you know a towel that gives back to marine life getting uh like metal straws that and single-use plastic Getting skateboards made from recycled fishing nets. You know, everything has to have, I like... I didn't even know those existed. Yeah, they, they go down to Chile. They get all the, they reclaim all these, like, fishing nets. They're ghost nets that end up killing a bunch of marine life. They kill coral. They kill, like, just the oceans. And so they're, like, taking these out of the waters. And then they melt them down. They uh, And then they form into these boards. It's, That's awesome. Yeah. And then another cool one is uh, bamboo skateboards. They're right here out of Fallbrook. And they use a sustainable bamboo forest to make their boards. So everything has to like be made in a thoughtful way or give back in a thoughtful way. And I think that's what's really like kind of set me apart from the regular beat shops. Because a lot of people are afraid to go into surf shops too because, oh, look at this kook. This, look at this kook. And like... Or people are like so quick to like hardcore surfer. yeah and it's like man i'm not here to judge you like i love the beach and if you are coming by me you love the beach like it's a mindset it's like that island mentality like you just want like a you know a peaceful calming place and that's what the ocean does it's one of the top three things that lowers your heart rate and so that's what the ocean does is that's why we live here is to have that easy access to that like calming effect and that Oh, yeah. You know, I that mean, meditative that's why state. That's I moved to the ocean. Yeah. I mean, I remember I was in a place in my life where shit was crazy. And then I went and I was up in more Monterey, sat on the rocks, watched the ocean. It was like the first time in years I'd felt peace. And I was like, I'm moving. Yeah. I'm moving to the ocean. That's awesome. Like, yeah, it, it's a real effect. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, it's the science is behind it. So It is. They, they call it the, the blue effect. Or I was reading about it the other day. But it's, uh, it's, about it's large bodies of water. Yeah, it. I know that. It's, it's large bodies of water, open fields of flowers, and uh, baby and animals. It's so powerful that you can get essentially the same effect just by looking at a photo of nature or the ocean. Yeah. Like, that's how strong our connection is with nature, is that you get almost the same effect as looking at fake nature. Yeah. Yeah, and that's at the shop, we did a large 100 foot mural. By this guy, Jared yeah. Laser, and um, it's all underwater. It starts dark water and gets lighter and lighter as it goes to the surface, and it's all local marine life you would find right off the coast. If you were snorkeling, scuba diving, it's all like the kelp beds are there. Mm -hmm. So it's you walk through and you feel like you're like immersed underwater, and it's just like a very like cool, calming. People are drawn to it and like pulls them in. And they're just like, whoa, let's check this yeah, out and see what's going on. It's a very awesome thing that you've done, like, for that hallway. Because is that the only entrance to your business, then, going down that long alleyway? So that's the entrance from Garnett. And you have another entrance And then we from? have the entrance from the back the alley along the okay. flip-flop fence. So we try and, like, have two fun, friendly entrances that may, are trying to be as welcoming as possible. I love it. Um, yeah. If you haven't seen the underwater alleyway it really is phenomenal jared did a wonderful job i know he had a couple of helpers mm -hmm. um i don't know their names but good job to those guys too but there's seals there's team jared yeah team jared uh there's a whale there's sharks there's 
jellyfish. There's giant angel wings, like mermaid angel wings. Yeah, that's the like, that's the big like one we the, did for like Instagram. Yeah, that's your Instagram mermaid spot. wings, and like there's like you can see like an octopus in it and palm trees. And it's like yeah, it's kind of made subliminal. Of, yeah, subliminally like made into wings. Yeah, so it's yeah. not like feathers. It's like right yeah. sea creatures sea, that yeah. make the wings. Yep, exactly. It's really neat. Yeah, really embraced <laughs> all of that. Yeah. Right. So, um, we were talking about kind of what it takes to be an award-winning business, just briefly, and then we started talking about the ocean. Yeah. For good reason. Yeah. Exactly. But, so, I mean, I know that. I mean, it took you ten years to get to that spot. You know, like, hey, like, oh yeah, concept to winning an award, ten years. Like, there's a lot that goes on in there. Um, so I guess what I'm kind of wondering is I'm sure that you personally developed a lot along the way. Like what kind of changes did you have to make in yourself in order to see like positive changes in your business? Um, I, well, I think to me, it's just always be looking to like grow and be open to learning and be open to being like, no, I'm not always right. And and that's okay. Um, I love learning new things, and uh, so that's like I said. Like we were looking at just like carrying just every sandal known to man, but then I'm like, no. I learned that the textile industry is, you know, not doing that great for the planet. So I was like, all right, let's change that. Let's get inside and kind of change things from the inside and turn things into a more positive direction. And so that's. Uh, what I just continue to do, and um, whether you're learning from books, articles, from people, networking, uh, just be open and willing to connect. I think that's like a really big thing is uh, just being, every like person has a different story, and like be open to hearing those stories, and be willing to connect and relate, and like understand different people's point of views. I, I feel like that's one of my better attributes is I can like kind of put myself in other people's shoes and be like dang you know like I totally get it I can feel that I understand that even though like I have like where I'm at and where what my beliefs are I can still understand other people's perspectives and I think that's important when you're dealing with people in business and in life um, it all relates and I think that's a great way to be able to just grow your network grow your community uplift each other mm -hmm. you know that's that's what i try and do i just love like taking things in like positive directions and like the you know like the glass half full type of person like i'd rather like all right let's see if we can make this a positive instead of this negative so i got it you make it i feel like it really is that simple just try and be a good person Trying to help everybody that you come across and try and get a little bit better every day. Yeah. Right? I mean, that sounds like that's those are the secret ingredients. You just told us the secret ingredients. That's <laughs> all it takes. Just be a good person. Elixir. Be a good person, help people, and learn a little bit every day. Like, that's how you get better over 10 years and win an award. Yeah. And um, what's great is, like, so I've been here 14 years now, and, uh, you know, like, I've really, like, connected with the community, and so I've been, lately, I've been getting more involved in the community, and doing a little bit more here and there, and, I've uh, been seeing you pop up doing more, like, beach cleans, yeah. being more vocal about ocean conservancy. Yeah, yeah, I've been a little bit more vocal, being a little bit more hands-on, uh, starting to, you know, like, you don't want to step on toes of, you know, people that have been there first. And so it's like, you know, you kind of put in your time, put in your dues, and respect, like, the people that have been there, learn from them, and then, you know, take a step forward, you know. I would have never opened the business without having that trust of my community, my network. I knew that working in the industry here, they have a very strong, you know, network. San mm -hmm. Diego, is, what I always say is San Diego is a big city but a small town. That's so true. And then when you're in the industry, it's even smaller. So it's you just connect, 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 connect. And so having that 
great community of uh, trust and support. I, uh, I, it was the biggest gamble of my life, and, but it was worth it. And even if I didn't make it a year, it was worth it to me because I knew I had people I could trust and fall back on to get back into working, you know, like uh, the hourly type job. And that's okay. And I would, you know, start over and, you know, build up again. Maybe it would take 10 years. Maybe it would take longer. But I just knew I had that trust, had that ability to believe in the community and that's why I continue to do what I do with like the beach cleanups, and getting people involved. We do, um, we try and do like an event every month, uh, minimum. So we we just uh, had the Friendsgiving event, right. that was in November, uh, with a big Black Friday event. So we had two big events then, and we had um, packages for a purpose in December. And that was uh, to help Dreams for Change. We packaged up all these gifts for homeless kids. And we provided the, uh, the soaps, the toothbrushes, and little toiletries. While we had a couple cool um, friends from uh, Shore Buddies donated 40 uh, stuffed animals that are made from recycled plastic bottles. I've been working with Malta for a while. This yeah. is amazing what he's done with those. Yeah, no, he's a he's a big part of um, the community, the business, mm -hmm. and uh, the eco-friendly mission. And um, so he donate. So we ended up with like forty stuffed animals to go along with these like toiletry essentials. Nice. And then the sock company donated forty pairs of socks as well. The San Diego sock company. Yep, the San guys Diego. right down on Garden. Yes, Hill. exactly. Just like local community supporting each other, <laughs> supporting. You know, like homeless children, like who can't get behind that? So, so it was really uh, cool of them to donate. And then like, you know, friends and family and community members came and we all wrapped these gifts together while having, you know, food and drinks, hanging out, music, had a, a white elephant exchange too on the side. So just like, like fun, really like fun events night. like that. And then for 2020, my mission was to do one beach cleanup a month. So we just had our block and beach cleanup. We started at Dawes and worked our way down to Baird and then all the way down to Crystal Pier. And we did the north and south alleys too. And like we got over 200 pounds of trash, over 5,000 cigarette butts. So just, Damn. and that was two hours. That's so, so much garbage. It's a lot of garbage. And we have relatively clean beaches yeah, compared to a lot of other places. Sure. And that's still just so much garbage. Yeah, it, it really is <laughs> like eye-opening how much you can find and get in just a matter of hours. Um, and what's crazy to think about, too, is like, so all those like cigarette butts, if those got their fines and their like the community hours with those, it would have came out to two point five million dollars that we could like use for the city to beautify our streets, different things like that, and then also uh, forty thousand community service hours of people that could be helping, you know, doing the same thing. So that's just yeah. like something very yeah. interesting. I I did the math on. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. It's funny. Um, <coughs> I just saw uh, La Mesa banned smoking in public like last month so no more cigarettes in la mesa oh wow also no smoking weed in public either but i feel like that's always kind of been the rule yeah but yeah just completely right, you're safer <laughs> in your own home right <laughs> exactly <laughs> get all those weed smoking commies out of here <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i think that's pretty cool like just no more cigarettes in public. Like, that's a findable yeah. offense now. That's, I mean, I think on one side it's a little, you know, dictate, what is that, dictatorian? Well, the, like, but the police law, the you police know, state, like, yeah, yeah police but, state, yeah. But also, it's, I feel like things like smoking are habits that you pick up because you see other people doing it. And, and if you can kind of cut yeah. that, then it's like, what does that do for our next generation? And we have the science behind it. You know, like, we understand, like, 
It's not good for you. It's not good to be secondhand smoking. It's no. just not. There's science. We know it. There's giant warnings on everything. Like there's nothing helping. So I mean, we serious. can't like. I'm not. I can't force people to stop. Like it's their life. It's their choice. But if we come out with laws that say it, then you can you force know, people like, to stop doing it around other people, though. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because it is something where you're. If you're in public smoking, it does affect other people around you, even if you don't think so. Like, if you somebody oh, yeah. walks by you on the street, they're getting secondhand smoke. Now, is that really going to do anything to them? Probably not, but it's still affecting them in yeah, some way. Yeah, science says it is. their body. For sure. And then, as you just proved, 5,000 cigarette butts on the beach in one in two hours. Like, those cigarette butts are not all making it into the trash cans. Yeah, and the, uh, the science behind them affecting the oceans and our waterways is every cigarette butt is a liter of water that's uninhabitable so that that because makes because of all of the chemicals the, the toxic chemicals poisons. yeah i just uh saw there is like somebody's trying to come out with like a biodegradable um filter green butts but i, I mean, mean it's still going to be holding all of the chemicals in it and the the cigarette companies don't care. They're giant. They have tons of money. They are like they just answer to shareholders. Yeah. And what I say is, my community is my shareholders. Like these are the people that when they invest in me, I invest back in them. You know, like that's what. And like, they're not just people that come to me aren't just a number. You know, like where that's for these guys, giant conglomerates and all that. You know, it's. You're zero one zero two two seven, you know, like or like to me, like oh, you're Greg Chapman. Nice to meet you. Like awesome. What's your story? Oh, cool. That's great. Oh man, you're doing so much cool, good for small business. That's really cool, you know. It's, it's, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just, I think that's where the big companies are missing out on is like that personal level. They like they got too big for their britches and type of thing and. Now it's just, they can't stop the machine. It's like, we must mm -hmm. get more money, you know? Because it does become a machine. I mean, part of yeah. it, part of it is, you know, the shareholder profits. But then the other side is, they have a lot of people to pay yeah. to work for them. Mm -hmm. Like, part of it is owner responsibility of, you have 1,000, 5,000, <laughs> 10,000 people that work for you that rely on you yeah. to feed their families. Definitely. And then, so then that's when you really start getting into the moral standards. It was funny, I found a photo online the other day, I shared it on my story, but someone found a really old like celebratory bottle of champagne from Subway when they only had a couple thousand stores. Oh. And it was like, here's to getting to 4,000 stores, like, and there's like a little letter on it, like, thank you for all your support, and it's made me think, it was like, it's really weird to think about, a, like Subway is the biggest fast food chain in the world. They have more stores and locations than any other um, store in the world, and so Man. thinking about that, I, I was thinking McDonald's. You, they beat you would McDonald's, think so, but huh? Subway yeah. has they more locations them. than McDonald's, um, and so I'm sure McDonald's is number two. In mm -hmm. them. <laughs> yeah. But it just it's weird to think about the big business being with the small business attitude. Like back when they were growing, like they weren't always a big business. Right. At some point, they were one store. Mm -hmm. or five stores, ten stores, yeah. and they had a small, tight-knit community, and they that's how they got big, was by being part of the community. Yeah. And so that shift, I don't know where it happens, yeah. but... And then you look at Subway, and they they don't even make footlongs anymore. Like, they're all, like, 11-inch sandwiches. <laughs> they're using meats filled with preservatives, yeah. and, you know, it's, like, one of the most unhealthy places to eat. But they started small, and having to motivate their teams mm -hmm. and giving awards and like all the things that you think of as a small business growing, like that was them. And it's so weird to think about that. Yeah. Like, yeah, that is like, and like, uh, I mean, McDonald's too, right? They were mm -hmm. just like a couple, the Kroc brothers, I believe, yeah. right? Like a couple uh, guys. It was the McDonald's brothers and then Ray Kroc. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Basically stole McDonald's from them. Yes, that's right. And made it huge. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's wild to think about. Yeah, it is. Oh, man, this was really good. I'm going to have to come stop by again. Um, I hope that we get the chance to work together again in the future. 
Um, can you tell the people where to find you? Your social media, website, your address, oh, yeah. phone number. Yeah, uh, we're located at 1033 Garnett Avenue. Um, it's all local, eco-friendly, and charitable. Uh, we are on Instagram and Facebook at Randall's Sandals. And uh, you can reach us at 619-241-6138. And our website is www.randallsandals.com. And we encourage you to check that out and follow us and give us some likes. And uh, stay tuned for more beach cleanups. We've got one coming up, uh, Beach Lovers Cleanup, uh, the day after Valentine's, Tourmaline Beach. Nice. And you're pretty much doing those like once a month, right? Yep. And so March will be our Go Green cleanup for St. Patty's Day. It'll be uh, a couple days after that. Nice. And is that on the website or are you just posting the social media? Where yeah, we, find we, uh, we post on the social media. And then we, uh, we have a big list of, um, I call them beach lovers and do-gooders, and we send out the digital flyers to them as well. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, go to their website, sign up for the flyer, find out when their beach cleans are, and go help beautify our community, and also buy some awesome sandals. Yeah. Thank you, Randall. Yeah, thank it's you. It was a pleasure. Appreciate it.